everybody. Welcome back to Environmental Organic Chemistry with Dr. Lisa. Uh, so we're going to talk about sorption of chemicals to organic matter in the environment. This is, uh, sorption is actually a couple of different chapters in, in the book. It's a big topic, uh, and I tried to distill it down to sort of the essence, which is, is hilarious to, for me to say that because this whole PowerPoint is like almost 70 slides long. So, hey, this is as good as I could do. It's a big topic, but I have broken it down into, I hope, digestible chunks. So um, we're going to sort of introduce the ideas of sorption, talk about sorption isotherms, and then we're going to talk about sorption to particulate organic matter and then sorption to dissolved organic matter. And then we'll also talk a tiny bit about sorption of acids and bases to natural organic matter. So NOM, POM, DOM, particulate dissolved natural organic matter. So first thing to recognize is that there's two different types of sorption. And so we use the word sorption when we don't know which of these two mechanisms is operating, which is frankly a lot of the time. But absorption with a B here uh, refers to uh, sorption or penetration into a three-dimensional matrix. Right, so ab, ab absorption, uh, penetration into a three-dimensional matrix. So this is like if you had octanol in your system, like we just did that example problem where we assumed that a wastewater treatment plant was a three-phase problem of water, air, and octanol. That would be absorption inside of the octanol. And frequently we think of absorption as happening when we have organic matter like on particles, like particular organic matter in uh, the water column. Adsorption with a D is when you have absorption onto a surface where the thing just sits on the surface. And this is often more important when you're talking about something like elemental carbon, like soot carbon, like black carbon that you get, you know, think of this um, as, you know, what you find on your fireplace residue, just like the black sooty carbon. And um, that is uh, often you only get absorption onto the surface of that kind of stuff. So, but that, those are just examples. It's not always true that, that sorption onto um, black carbon is always adsorption. And it's also not always true that sorption onto natural organic matter is absorption. So yeah, it's complicated. Anyway, uh, the sorbate is the sorbate, not, <laughs> yeah, sorbate. I was gonna make a joke there and then the joke just like went out of my head. <laughs> I'm having one of those days. Anyway, okay, so the sorbate is the molecule that's being absorbed, adsorbed or absorbed. So this is your chemical, which we've been calling little i all the way through here. Little i, this is your chemical i. The sorbent is the matrix into or onto which the sorbate is going to sorb. Uh, and so that could be the black carbon, could be the natural organic matter, could be cells, you know, could be phytoplankton floating around in the, in the water column, could be any kind of sorbent. So this is important because the same molecule is going to have a totally different fate in the environment. If, for example, if it's in the gas phase, later in the semester, we're going to talk all about reactions that happen in the gas phase. Uh, but those reactions only happen in the gas phase. There's also a whole series of reactions that happen in the dissolve phase and only in the dissolve phase. Uh, and also, you know, if a chemical is in the gas phase, it's moving with the wind and the wind comparatively moves very quickly. Water also moves relatively quickly, not as fast as the gas phase, but it does tend to flow uh, most of the time, you know, whether you're in a lake or a river, there's, there's usually some flow. Um, but the solids often don't flow. They might just get, they might settle out and stick to the bottom of the river and not go anywhere. And so whether or not some of these reactions are happening and how fast the chemical moves depends on whether it's absorbed onto solid particles. So yeah, that's what I just said. Um, the other thing I will notice is that I'm certainly no expert on toxicology, but as a first approximation, usually we assume that uh, molecules that are absorbed to any kind of particle are not bioavailable. So they're not going to be biodegraded and they will not have the ability to get into the system and cause toxic effects. That is a first approximation, not always true, but it's, it's, a, it's a rule of thumb and it, it often works. Okay, so... <clears throat> Absorption is difficult because the natural environment is complex. If you think about a soil or a sediment, it's made up of many things. It's got minerals in it. It's also got natural organic matter. It's got um, uh, the, the uh, <laughs> my, my brain's not working today. 
just just no, nothing. I got nothing. Uh, so it's got natural organic matter. It's got elemental carbon in the form of like soot or black carbon. So it's got a lot of different sorbents. And also the surface of the minerals and, and also the surface of the natural organic matter can have these functional groups sticking out. And those can actually react covalently uh, as in this example, they actually form a covalent bond with the chemical. And, and at that point, is it sorbed? Is that the right word to use? Sorption? Uh, to me, things that are covalently bonded to the surface are not sorbed. They're, they're gone. They're, they're no longer, you know, this is no longer dimethyl aniline. Uh, but anyway, some people would call that sorption. Irreversible sorption, perhaps, which to me is kind of a contradiction in terms. But anyway, um, so you could have chemical bonds forming. You could just have ion pairing, you know, an ion exchange type ph phenomenon where this positively charged aniline is, is attracted to the negatively charged surface of this mineral. Or you could have sorption inside the organic matter. Uh, not shown here is that you could have just black carbon, in which case the mineral, the, the compound would just absorb onto the surface. So there's lots of things, lots of mechanisms of things that can happen here. And, and that makes the whole concept of absorption is very tricky. That's why we have almost 70 slides on the topic. So simple approximation. First thing we do is we define this thing that, that people call KD. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I, it, it's a mystery. Uh, you know. Somebody decided this is a good idea. Anyway, so this is a quote unquote equilibrium constant, but it's the problem is it's not very constant. Uh, but nevertheless, we define this thing and we call it the concentration that's absorbed divided by the concentration that's in the aqueous phase. Problem is, how do you express the concentration of something that's absorbed to a solid? Well, you might do it as moles per kilogram of solids or milligrams of your chemical per kilogram of solid. But the stuff that's in the aqueous phase is either moles or milligrams per liter which means that the, these moles cancel out, but we're still left with the kilograms and the liters. And so the KD has units of liters per kilogram. Now, a liter of water is about a kilogram, right? Depending on the density, depending on the temperature, depending on whether it's got salt in it. But yeah, it's roughly a kilogram. So this is pretty close to parity, but it's not exactly the same thing. Okay, <clears throat> so KD is really easy, right? The problem is it's, it does. It has a lot of flaws, right? Because when just because you write an equation doesn't make that equation true, right? I can write all kinds of equations. It doesn't make them true. Uh, and so when you write an equation, you know, math is a mysterious thing. And uh, when you write an equation, you, it's like a picture is worth a thousand words. An equation is worth a thousand words. An equation says a whole lot more than than just KD equals CS over CW. When you write this equation, you're implicitly making assumptions. You're assuming that all of the absorption sites have the same energy, meaning the same affinity for your chemical. And you're also assuming that there's an infinite number of them so that this relationship goes on forever. No matter how big CS gets and no matter how big CW gets, this relationship goes on forever. And that is definitely not true. So both of these assumptions are usually not true, which is the whole problem with KD. So KD is the simple approach to describing absorption and, and you'll still see it. People will still use it, but you have to keep in mind it's got lots and lots of flaws and issues. And in the next few segments of this long discussion about absorption, we're going to talk about all the things that are wrong with KD and all the ways that we can get around it to come up with something better. <laughs>